Yep, you read the title right. My friend's crypto wallet got completely wiped. In this video, I want to share with you how not to be him. Over the past year, cryptocurrency has grown rapidly, to say the least. Things have gotten quite intense in terms of monetary value of each top cryptocurrency, and it's only growing day by day. And so is the interest of scammers who are switching off that Nigerian Prince email spam and switching over to scamming even the most tech savvy people in the industry. No longer is it just your grandma and grandpa getting scammed, but it might also be you if you don't prepare accordingly. So the story of my friend getting his wallet wiped. I'm gonna pretty much spin this story in and out of how to prevent what happened to him and also you know, what happened to him. So first things first, my friend opened up his wallet the other day only to see that instead of 300 ADA in it or Cardano, uh, which is worth around five to 600 bucks at the time in Canadian, it was zero. And at first he thought it was a glitch. He refreshed only to see though that it was all gone and there's no getting it back. Before we even get too far into the story any much further, I want to make this abundantly clear. The number one way, in my opinion, and the best way that you can avoid getting scammed in crypto wallets is to get yourself a hardware wallet. Harbor wallets essentially add an extra step of security or a second form of authentication. And that means every time you have to send a transaction, you're confirming it before it actually gets put onto the blockchain and submitted and your Cardano or whatever else cryptocurrency you have goes bye-bye. My friend actually has a hardware wallet, but he had about 300 ADA out of his 2000 on the not so hardware wallet. It's what we call a web-based wallet. It's also known as a hot wallet. And this is where the wallet's accessible with a 12 to 24 word seed phrase, essentially just a bunch of random words. This is your private key. And then those are stored locally on your machine under your web browser, but they're encrypted with the wallet password you set when you import the wallet. So your wallet is technically hot, your keys are encrypted, but they are on your local machine. With a Harbor wallet, this isn't the case. The one that I would recommend is probably the cheapest option and it's a Ledger Nano S. They are adding Cardano support very soon and a, they have a bunch of other native app support which you can store your crypto on them. Uh, this one's about 60 bucks, there's a link down in the description and it's the one I use. You click these buttons to confirm transactions while it's connected to your PC. If you want one for mobile, then I'd recommend the other one which is the Nano X because it has Bluetooth support and then you're gonna be able to connect mobile. Something also important to note is that you will still have to write a seed phrase or private keys down of 12 to 24 words to recover your wallet or your hardware wallet device in the case that you lose it or you just want to put it onto another device so you have a second way of confirming transactions. You will still need to write something down and if someone does get a hold of that piece of paper, they can have access to your funds if they go into their own hardware wallet and recover your seed phrase. So. That is important to note. Now let's also go into why this isn't the same as your normal run-of-the-mill papers and what makes it better than the traditional paper wallet or hot, or hot wallet if you haven't already figured it out. So as I mentioned earlier, and I wanna stress this point, when you make a wallet with MetaMask or NAMI or any other you know, wallet creation or wallet application on the whatever blockchain you're using, that is going to store your private key. So those 12 to 24 words that gives anyone access to your wallet locally. Albeit, it will be encrypted, so someone's gonna have to get onto your PC, you know, log your keystrokes or find out the password and unencrypt that file, but it can be done and there is massive financial incentive to do so. So just know that people are doing this. People will get into hotware, hot wallets and having a hardware wallet is probably the easiest way to secure your crypto funds outside of just pretty much completely protecting and securing your local machine that you do your crypto transactions with, with your hot wallet. Now I know you're probably panicking a bit right now if you have a hot wallet, but please don't. I had a lot of funds in a hot wallet and I didn't get scams. I've had probably, you know, many thousands of ADA worth of NFTs in a hot wallet and they're still okay. But I do want to stress that I'd recommend a Harbor wallet. It will help you sleep at night knowing that someone's not going to just randomly confirm your stuff and it's going to help you uh, really make sure that every protocol you sign on to with uh, your crypto is safe and they can't just confirm transactions on their own. They need your hardware wallet device to do so, to sign off on these transactions. 
Now I also want to go over some methods and kind of tell you guys how my friend got scammed, what happened to his hot wallet, how was someone able to get into his PC, get his key and unencrypt it and then recover from themselves and send themselves all the funds. Well, let's go over that now. In all honesty, I'm not 100% sure the root of my friend's attack or which piece of software he downloaded and allowed access to his PC that was the malicious one. However, I can tell you some common methods that scammers use so you can avoid being fished into this group of people who have caught their hot wallets basically compromised and everything wiped out of them. But I also want to mention that this isn't just for cryptocurrency. My friend's account got hacked on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, YouTube, all of his discords, emails. So this basically virus or a lot of malware going around that is phishing isn't just phishing for crypto, it's phishing for people's information in general. And now crypto is added on to that bulk so they can make even more profit off of scamming people and compromising people's PCs. Here's a list of some methods that scammers use that I think are worth being aware of. First, scammers pretend to be wallet support and they take people's seed phrases on something like a Google form. You're going to see these all over Twitter and all over YouTube via WhatsApp or via linking a Google support form in response to keywords, MetaMask, Yoroi, NAMI, you know, any kind of wallet key phrase. These bots are going to reply with a Google form that help you recover and fix your account, but really you're just giving them your seed phrase. Second thing to be very aware of are malicious dApps or wallet applications that aren't actually wallets. Basically, they're not open source and they're pretending to be a working product when in reality, they're just there to take your steed phrase when you try to recover with their application. Probably the biggest one and the most known one is phishing emails. They get you to click links to download hidden malicious software or open up a PDF that injects something into your machine and then it gains access to your PC's file system and at that point, you're compromised. They can have access to as much as they want, depending on what they've installed on your PC or managed to get there. Uh, they can pretty much get anything they want in terms of personal information that is on your PC or your wallet seed phrase encrypted with that wallet password that you set on importing it. Another common method that a lot of people probably fall into, especially the more tech savvy people trying to torrent software and download any kind of hacks for games are just sketchy things in general anything that is torrented or hacks for games often have uh you know some malicious content in them and you have to be very aware of that especially when you're using these uh p your pc to also download games or sketchy files while you're running a hot hot wallet because if someone gets to access your pc you have a hot wallet it is most likely going to get wiped and these are only a few of the methods that scammers are using people all over the world are getting scammed every day. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my friend's hacker and their scamming business, but I also wanna mention that the best way to pre prevent all this is probably just to get a harbor wallet, especially if you don't want to completely take your PC offline or put your hot wallets on separate local machines. I think the best way to avoid this is to have a harbor wallet. Also, I think it's worth mentioning you should never ever put your seed phrase in plain text anywhere with an internet connection and it, especially plain text, but also even encrypted to try to avoid that as much as possible. Hot wallets can be very convenient, but they also come with their own risks. So please be aware of them. Also on the note of connecting to malicious dApps or wallets trying to be a front to take your seed phrase. If you're using a hardware wallet, you only ever export the public keys. You don't export your private keys or your seed phrase. You just export the public keys so they can have access to your balances and see what you have, but they can't actually spend any of it, which is another huge plus for Harbor wallets. My friend's scenario falls under the malicious software category. And honestly, I could have been under this category too. I've downloaded some pretty sketchy things. Luckily, I do have an uninstaller that anytime I download something, I'm extra careful with, but it's very easy to slip up and for something to get in that is going to be able to have access to your PC, especially when they're looking for it or they're targeting you, it's not that difficult and the incentive is rather large. So you really should be cautious with what you're downloading and what kind of emails or messages you're opening and especially so when you're using your PC locally that is connected to your hot wallets. Okay, now let's get into the hacker's wallet. Basically the person who took all my friend's funds out of their wallets, 
and kind of see what they've been up to, see what they're doing. And is my friend the only person that they have been scamming lately? Obviously, the answer is no. After the attack, I went over to the transaction log where my friend lost 286 ADA to be exact. And the hacker luckily hadn't taken my friend's NFTs, which were probably worth about 2000 ADA. So I guess you can't say it was completely wiped, but I think 286 ADA is still a lot just to be gone into the wind that is never going to be recovered. After shuffling through all the transactions and all the addresses that went in and out of the address that the scammer had control of, basically he has around 7,000 ADA at this point. At least that's what I can see active in his wallet that was used to scam my friend. That being said, that's not it. There is over 4,000 addresses that this scammer had control of from what I could tell. And that's quite a bit. These are all under the same state key, meaning it's all the same person. And that obviously means that this person has been doing this for a while. And as I checked the transactions, I could see that scams were still coming in and nothing was really going out unless it was to an exchange. Speaking of exchanges, I went and looked into some of the past transactions that came out of that wallet with 7,000 ADA in it. And in those transactions, I found a withdrawal of 30,000 ADA to an exchange wallet with around 900 million ADA. Um, so it was obviously an exchange wallet. These people took that ADA, they sent it to an exchange and they instantly sold it, okay? Now you could track them down. Me and my friend are trying to figure out which exchange got this ADA, but in the end, there's no really way that my friend will ever get his crypto back. The authorities could be alerted, but the crypto is gone in the wind. And this brings me to my last point of the video, which is you need to wake up your security. If you're not paying attention, if you're not using two factor authentication of some sort on every account you own, you are very behind. I really think, especially in crypto where everything's a wild, wild west and there's no refunds, there's no one doing thing. It is extremely important to be careful um, on your local machines that are connected to any kind of cryptocurrency activity and also put two to three factor authentication on all of them, especially hot wallets and exchange wallets. Actually, I have a great video for you to watch. It's about an hour and a half long by Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, that goes over securing all of your crypto side of things and your accounts. And in general, it's just a great video on security. So I'd highly recommend you watch that video if you're interested in beefing it up a bit and getting a better understanding on how you can protect yourself. That video will be linked down in the description. And one final note before we go, do me a favor. If you see a message in your inbox or wherever else or video on YouTube claiming to send double the amount of crypto back, if you just send, you know, 10,000, they'll send 20,000 back, it's a scam. And to be honest, if it sounds too good to be true, you know the rest. It is. So please be careful. Please have a great freaking day. It's been your friend Jack. Don't forget to like button on your way out and I'll see you guys in the next freaking video. Peace out.